Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and all keeping safe and clean. And listen, I'm about to lay it down in this video. We've all seen the news headlines regarding Tammy Abraham and his wage demands for a new contract and it being the reason why he hasn't signed yet. But I have the financial numbers and I was going to say theory, explanation of why this is still a good deal for Chelsea Football Club and really explain to you why perhaps his agent's putting this forward, what the situation is, how football finance works in simple terms or as simple as I can portray it. Trust me, it's going to be interesting and hopefully enlightening. Something that you probably all knew in the back of your heads but you really need to think about before you react. So stick with me. Before we get into the content, I want to remind you guys I'm sponsored by One Football, the superb all-in-one football platform that gives you fixtures, statistics, scores, of course, when football's running, but when football is not running, they give you football news, updates, whether it be Chelsea Football Club or indeed anything around world football, all consolidated onto one platform slash app. Check out One Football, click the link in the top of the description that I've put in. All right, let's get into it. So, I'm sure you've seen it, the headlines, Tammy Abraham stalling over signing a new contract because of wage demand. He is reportedly, so say if the athletic, he's demanding 180,000 pounds per week. That is a lot of money. A lot of peas for a guy who's still young. Now, okay, let's think about the different camps before I get into the explanation of the finances, right. To be fair, Tammy Abraham has put graft in generally. He's gone on loan a few times, he's scored loads of goals, he's taken the number nine shirt, and he's done, by all accounts, well as the Chelsea starting striker. So yes, he deserves a new contract, possibly a contract that reflects him being the starting striker into next season. Now, whether you think that should be 100K, 120K, 150K, I don't know, but a lot of people have reacted negatively to the reported wage demands of £180,000 per week and understandably on the face of things, alright? I can't, I get it. Now the truth is, I want to caveat this video's message with this short message. They'll always have the fact will remain it's like a principal thing, giving a young player X amount of money. Even though he does deserve a new contract because of the loans, the gold he scored over the last few years. But I get it. I just want to let you guys know at this point in the video, I understand that perspective of just making like a youngster super rich. But from here, I want to explain why it's still a really, really good deal for Chelsea Football Club to give him that contract now. This all is probably coming from Tammy Abraham's agent camp his people right no one's gonna i wouldn't want to immediately assume tammy abraham as an individual is a really greedy young man and's like oh the only way i'll carry on playing for chelsea is if you pay me oh i don't know 180k a week i think this number has been carefully calculated by his people and represents a figure that would save chelsea football club a lot of money still now a friend of mine joe tweedy you may or may not have heard of him he's uh, got a big twitter account in the chelsea community he's an expert in finance and often is writing about Chelsea Football Club. He helped me out and displayed and demonstrated some figures in football finance that explain why this is a good deal for Chelsea. And I'd urge you to go and follow Joe Tweedy on Twitter. I'll put his at, his handle on the screen now. Firstly, I'm gonna do this in simple terms because I, like many of you, I'm not an expert in finance and all the terminology used. So clubs look at the value of a player or how much he's costing them in total. So it's not just the wages they get paid every week, month, a year. They break up their transfer fee and they segment it into the years, weeks as well. They basically look at their whole value or cost together combining transfer fee and wages. So off the bat, of course, academy players are free. They didn't pay anything for them. Of course, the academy owes Chelsea for devel developing them into such good players, but Chelsea still owe these players for devoting themselves to Chelsea Football Club and, you know, wanting to stay, getting to these elite players, and then, of course, signing the contracts that they are worth. So let's talk about what players are worth. So if Tammy Abraham is given this contract by Chelsea Football Club for 180k per week and say he signs a five-year deal, Tammy Abraham will cost Chelsea just over £9.6 million 
per year. Sounds like a lot? Not really. Currently, Michy Batshuayi costs Chelsea over 11.3 million per year. So that's already significantly more than Tammy Abraham, and of course this is taking into account the original transfer fee for Michy Batshuayi. Now, football clubs are businesses, man. This is an inescapable thing. They look at their players, their products, they say what are they doing in terms of performance and how much are they costing us annually. They'll look at the likes of Michy Batshuayi who's costing more than Tammy Abraham, offering less as a product, as a service, as an asset on the pitch, and they'll look at someone like Tammy Abraham who, given this 180k contract, will be inherently offering more because of the current setup, his age, obviously he's English as well. People need to remember as well his value as an asset because they haven't bought him so they can cost him any money. He'll cost him less because there's only just these wages, but also they're developing a value as an asset in Tammy Abraham who will be signed on a long-term deal. So already that's a lot of reasons. Now also, we need to think about, sure people might be opposed to paying academy players on huge wages, but think about, again, from the business perspective, what they cost Chelsea, what they offer Chelsea. For example, Rhys James has signed a bumper new contract and cost Chelsea 5.2 million pounds per year. He's a starter and a massive player for Chelsea, and that's 2.5 times the amount of Michy Batshuayi, who rarely gets a sniff. Here's another one, Danny Drinkwater. Remember him? He's always headbutting people in training, going out, getting drunk, causing loads of problems, hasn't really ever played for Chelsea. Remember that Danny Drinkwater? Danny Drinkwater costs Chelsea 12 million pounds per year. 12 million pounds! And people are getting concerned about Tammy Abraham costing Chelsea 9.6 million pounds per year on a new contract who is scoring some goals. And Bakayoko, yeah, remember Bakayoko? He is currently costing Chelsea closer to 14 million pounds per year. Drink water and Bakayoko, together costing Chelsea 26 million pounds per year. Now, I'm not saying that Tammy Abraham is the best striker in the world and deserves this best wage. The agent will know the value of the player to the club and be like, look man, they're going to save loads of money regardless, they're developing an asset regardless, you're worth this, you asked for this man. It's just football business, he's a professional footballer, Chelsea's a business. Eventually they'll look at it and say, regardless, this is a good deal for us, so we should do it. Do you know what I mean? And this is even, this is, sure, that would be an, Im an immense price for a backup striker, say if Chelsea bring in another striker. But if Chelsea bring in, say, the same calibre striker as Tammy Abraham, they'll still end up paying the same money, if not a bit more. It works out for Chelsea to bring in a striker to cost them approximately the same amount of money. They'd have to bring in a striker for 30 million pounds and pay them 70k a week. Now, bringing in a striker for 30 million pounds doesn't get you anything. Moussa Dembele apparently is going to cost 80 million and he's average. There's a premium on strikers at the moment. I do like Moussa Dembele, but let's be real, he's not amazing at the moment. And he certainly would want a lot more than 70k a week. And who's to say he'll score any more goals than Tammy Abraham? Do you know what I mean? So you could bring in an elite striker, pay him, I don't know, what, 200k a week, 250k a week, if they truly are a Galactico, and then Tammy, you'd be like, well, 180 is a lot for a backup, but in the grand scheme of things, it's actually saving Chelsea Football Club money. He's worth a lot of money because of his age, his nationality, whether you like it or not, being English does increase his value. He'll be on a long contract, which will increase his value. And let's not forget, Tammy Abraham still scores goals in the Premier League. He's shown he can do it. He's got an England call up. He scored for England's first team. All adds value, all shows promise, and all dictates a high wage especially when you haven't cost the club anything in terms of a transfer fee outlay. So to like wrap things up here, clubs look at players in terms of financial outlay, combining both wages and their transfer fee annually. Academy players obviously have no transfer fee. And to be honest, because they're young English skilled players, they develop value anyway inherently as assets as they sign long-term contracts. And regardless to them demanding more wages because of the position they're in and their agents are in, the players are in, and Chelsea are in, they get paid more money. Ruben Loftus-Cheek gets paid more than the likes of Jorginho and Kovacic because he's an academy player. This is how football finance works with players. So yeah, doing stuff like this, 
gives Chelsea the opportunity to not waste 14 million pounds a year on Bakayoko or 12 million pounds on drink water. These kind of squad rotational filling players can now cease to exist. You can just pay a bit more on wages for academy players and then you can focus all your actual transfer fees on the Galactico players to bring in and truly raise the squad level up a couple of notches. Right, there you have it. I hope I've laid it down for you. Go follow Joe Tweedy on Twitter if you want more sensible Chelsea finance stuff and indeed just Chelsea football stuff. If you have enjoyed the content today, I'd urge you guys to like the video. That helps me out a lot and subscribe to the channel if you're new you're welcome to follow me on the socials at football yannick on both instagram and twitter <laughs> take it easy you lot enjoy the football that's not happening and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me,